So, the most famous equilibrium for games is the Nash Equilibrium, uh, named after John Nash, uh, who discovered it in, uh, in the around 1950s uh, for his PhD thesis. And uh, he later on received a Nobel Prize in economics for it. So, to talk about it first, I need to define best response. So, the best response uh, for a player, for a give, uh, best response for a player is is what you might expect is you know the agent's best response given the other, the other player's action, right? So uh, Alice's best response to C. So if Bob plays C, Alice's best response would be to play uh, A, right? So if Bob plays C, Alice is looking at either two or one, so she should play A. So that's your best response. Given that, we can say that uh, strategy S is in a Nash equilibrium, right? If, you know, for all the players, it is true that they're, that, you know, given that everybody else is playing their Nash equilibrium strategy, their best response is to play the Nash equilibrium, right? So S is a Nash equilibrium. If, you know, if for all players, if for all players, uh, you know, given, um, sorry, given that you're playing that everybody else is playing the Nash Equilibrium, your best response is to play the Nash Equilibrium. So, something like that. So, if for all agents' eyes, given that other others play their Nash Equilibrium, uh, I's best response is to play their his Nash Equilibrium. So, it's, you know, sort of by definition, an equilibrium, right? It's saying that if everybody else plays the Nash Equilibrium, then the best thing for me to do is to play the Nash Equilibrium. And that's the Nash Equilibrium. So let's look at it here in this example. Let's say, uh, you know, the way you find Nash Equilibrium is to check each box, right? So you say, let's look at this one. Uh, you say, let's look at this box here, AC. So if Bob plays C, what is Alice's best response? Uh, well, Alice's best response is to play A. So if Bob plays C, Alice says, you know, has two choices, A or B. If she plays B, she gets one. If she plays A, she gets two. So clearly Alice should play A. Um, so then you have to check Bob too. So you say, if Alice plays A, what's Bob's best response? So if Alice plays A, Bob should clearly play, well, he gets one or two, so he should play D. Right? So this is not an Ash equilibrium. Right, uh, because if Alice plays A, C is not a Nash equilibrium. Because if Alice plays A, Bob's best response is not to play C; it is instead to play D. So let's check this one down here. Uh, we can say, well, if Alice plays B, uh, Bob is either looking at two or three. Uh, so his best response is not C; is D, right? Because he could get you know three. So that's not Nash equilibrium. Let's look at this one over here. Uh, Alice would say, well, if, if Alice plays B, uh, then Bob um, Bob is um, definitely wants to play D, right? Because he's looking at two or three. So that's okay. If Bob, given that Bob plays D, then Alice is looking at either three or two, right? So Alice is does not, it's going to choose A, right? So given that Bob plays D, Alice, is not, Alice will not want to play B. So this is not a Nash equilibrium, which leaves us with this guy here. Uh, and uh, we can see that if Bob plays D, then Alice's best response is to play A, right? Because it's either three or two. And similarly, if Alice plays A, then Bob's best response is to play D, Right, because either he's looking at either one or two, so he's going to go for two. So this is a Nash equilibrium. Uh, it's a pure Nash equilibrium. So what uh, what Nash proved is that you know all games, all games have at least one, at least one Nash equilibrium, uh, but it could be mixed. So remember we talked about pure versus mixed strategies. Uh, well, uh, it could be mixed. The Nash equilibrium 
In this case, we know we have a pure Nash equilibrium, AD, but it could be that there is no pure Nash equilibrium. There is only a mixed Nash equilibrium. So you have to do probabilities. Uh, so that could happen. And what could also happen is have a lease. You know, we said it has a lease. So you could have multiple Nash equilibria. And that actually happens a lot. So you have a lot of games with many Nash equilibrium. And then you can talk about, uh, you can also talk about situations where you have two that have the same numbers. So they're sort of a tie. So you have weak Nash equilibria. Uh, versus strong Nash equilibria, and the subtle distinction, you know, between if numbers are the same, if you can go to another one with the same number as weak uh, versus strong. And uh, so those are very common. So again, generally, we the, so we have multiple uh, Nash equilibria. Generally, the problem is this, that there are multiple Nash equilibria and uh, in building a system you're trying to decide uh, which one of those will the do you are your agents going to settle on right and um, so that's the coordination problem generally choosing between Nash equilibria uh, so you tend to throw out anything that is not a Nash equilibria because you know it's not going to be stable or it gets thrown by it by not being stable and then it's a question of where do you end up and how do you guide your search because you know maybe in some nasa equilibriums you don't are not as good as other ones and uh, uh, nash equilibrio has not has nothing to do with Pareto optimality uh so you might want you know some nash equilibrio might be preferred by you as a system designer uh, than other ones uh so that's it